Hi friends, welcome back to another video. Today I am trying something completely new that I've never done before. That is gold leaf. I'm really excited to try this. I ordered a kit from Blick Art Supplies. It's this old world art leafing kit and it comes with everything you need supposedly to do gold leaf. So I'm gonna be combining it with a watercolor painting today and it's just gonna be a simple shape just to start out because honestly this scares me a little bit. And I always say if it scares you a little bit, you should probably do it. So I've got my supplies here. I'm gonna be doing this tiger design. I found this beautiful free image online of a tiger and I've already sketched it on. I actually used some water soluble pencils to sketch on the tiger and just did a little bit of orange shading in the head already because why not. Now as you can see I'm using a different surface today. This is an ampersand aqua board. It's a three quarter inch cradled board which is really fun because you can actually hang these directly on the wall. You don't have to frame them behind glass. As long as you seal them with a protective varnish, you can hang these directly on the wall without glass. So that's the fun thing about Aquaboard. It is a little different surface to work on. It's a little less absorbent than watercolor cotton paper. So something just to keep in mind as you're working, but I really love the different effects you can achieve with Aquaboards and thought this would be a really fun project and I wanted something really quality and sturdy to do my first ever experiment with gold leaf on. We're now ready to try the gold leaf portion of this project. I've traced on a circle onto my tiger image. All I did was I took my photoshopped tiger and I used transfer paper and just traced the circle on. But you could also use a round object that's the size that you're going for to trace onto your paper. Now it says the surface must be clean and dry. So I'm just gently wiping away any dust or debris. The kit came with these brushes. And also use that to kind of brush away the surface make sure that there isn't any residual eraser residue or anything like that so i'm making sure it's completely dry and clean now since this is a somewhat porous surface i think i'm going to use the satin sealer ahead of time it does say that the object must be free of moisture and porous surfaces must be completely sealed so i'm not sure how it's going to react to this aquaboard surface so i'm thinking that using the satin sealer will be helpful just to make sure that it's ready and prepped for the gold leaf. This is also going to be used to apply to the gold leaf after we've put that on. So I'm going to add it before and after. And this is going to take some time. There's a lot of drying time involved with this process. Once you seal it, it has to be left to dry for about two hours. Oh, the cap is hard to get off. Oh. I might need to go ask for husband's help. Whew, success. So my husband had to open this for me. He had to use a pliers. So if you have the same kit and you're struggling with getting the cap open, even a strong six foot two man needed a pliers to open it. So don't feel bad if that's hard for you. Okay, so I got it open. This stuff has a strong smell to it. So I need a soft bristle brush to use to paint the sealer onto my circle shape. And it says that the brush needs to be cleaned immediately with paint thinner after using the sealer. Okay, so we've got the sealer painted on. I'm gonna rinse this brush right away in my paint thinner, and then I'll wash it with soap and water just to protect the bristles. So we need to let this dry for at least an hour or two before we can start the gold leaf process. The next step is to paint on a coat of adhesive size to the area where I want to apply my gold leaf. The adhesive size that came with this kit is labeled Wanda Adhesive Size Number 802 and it comes in a 2 ounce bottle. Unlike the satin sealer, I didn't have any trouble removing this cap. I took one of my oil painting brushes and carefully painted the adhesive size into my circle shape. The instructions say it needs to be a thin but uniform coat and says in all caps, do not leave puddles. 
I made sure not to let any of this product overlap my painting. I worked slowly and carefully in order to stay inside of my pencil lines. Once I finished painting out the adhesive size, I immediately washed my brush in paint thinner and then again with soap and water. I let the adhesive dry for a little over an hour. The color changes from a milky white to a clear after it dries. Now before handling the gold leaf, I thoroughly washed and dried my hands and then gently removed a sheet of gold leaf from the booklet. They're about five and a half inches square, so my goal was to try and use the single sheet to cover my entire circle shape. Unfortunately, my aim was a bit off, so there was still a sliver at the bottom without the leaf. You can see how delicate the leaf is and just how easily it tears and sticks to your fingers. Now fortunately, some overlapping is totally okay, so I was able to take some extra leaf and pat it onto that bottom section. I then used one of the soft bristle brushes that was included in my kit with the bristles pointed directly at the surface to dab the metal leaf onto the adhesive. I made sure I dabbed the entire adhesive area and then took a piece of cheesecloth, also included with the kit, and gently burnished the gold surface until it felt completely smooth. The whole area covering the tiger's head contained a large section of unused gold leaf, so I took a palette knife and removed the biggest extra piece of leaf I could manage to get, setting it aside for another use. I removed excess leaf from the edges using soft swirling brush strokes. This part of the process was so relaxing and enjoyable. It's what you see all those videos on TikTok or on Instagram of people using the gold leaf. It's just so fun. This was the most incredibly satisfying part to see the shape of the tiger just emerge surrounded by all this luminous gold. After completely brushing away the excess leaf, I applied one more coat of satin sealer to the gold circle, once again cleaning my brush with paint thinner right afterwards. I allowed this to dry for at least two hours. Now I could have left the painting like this, but I wanted to try out a solid color for the white unpainted surface. I almost never use acrylic paint, but it does have some redeeming qualities. So I used a Winsor Newton Cerulean Blue Hue acrylic paint to carefully paint the entire background area. I thought that this complementary color to the tiger's orange would look really cool. I used a small cheap craft brush to ensure that my lines were nice and neat. Once I finished the first coat, I added a second layer just to make sure all the bumps and valleys of the aqua board were completely covered. Now since watercolor can be easily reactivated, the very last step was to varnish and seal the painting. I used a Krylon spray finish, outdoors of course, because the smell is so strong, to seal the artwork. I was totally thrilled with how my first gilded painting turned out. It was so much simpler and easier than I expected, and 100% I plan on doing it again. If, by the way, you would like a full-length tutorial on how to paint the tiger with watercolor, the real-time version of that tutorial is available through my Watercolor Mastery membership. The monthly membership includes over 140 narrated watercolor tutorials including a comprehensive 30-day course just for beginners, lessons on painting skin tones and fur texture, and tons of fun painting projects for all levels. Many of the tutorials include drawing instruction, but all of them do come with a downloadable reference photo, a traceable line drawing, and a complete list of supplies. I'll leave a link in the description below so you guys can check that out. Leave me a comment below and let me know what you think of this glittery, gilded addition to the artwork. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.